when Chinese troops advanced into Tibet on October 7, 1950. Most Tibetans were unaware of the invasion. News of the Chinese invasion of 1950 reached us in 1952, Dawa Norbu, then a toddler, wrote for Worldview magazine in 1978. This was Tibet in 1950. On roof of the world. A distant land far removed from both blessings and disasters of modernity. News traveled slowly. Concerns even slower. Despite the alarming news. No one in Sakya sharpened his sword or cleaned his bow and arrows. Norbu wrote. Sakya residents could not have imagined that the Chinese invasion would effectively initiate a permanent occupation that would change Tibet forever. 73 years after the occupation, we remember how the incident unfolded. China's motivations for taking over Tibet even before proclamation of the People's Republic of China. On October 1, 1949, Chinese Communist Party had made annexing Tibet a top priority. There were both ideological and pragmatic motivations behind this. The communists wanted to shore up China's southwestern border and gain access to Tibet's abundant natural resources. Ideologically, for CCP, feudal theocracy whose people needed freedom. Moreover, annexation was seen as culmination a historical project. Had always been part China. And for newly assertive Chinese state. Unification simply fulfilling call fate. But Tibet's history was different. Before 1950, Tibet existed historically independent of Chinese control, with its distinctive culture, language, and religion. Even after 1720, when the Qing dynasty established its rule over Tibet, Tibetans remained largely free from direct Chinese intervention in their affairs. And after the end of Qing rule in 1911, Tibet became a de facto independent state. How did the communist occupation proceed? Tense negotiations were ongoing between Lhasa and Beijing throughout much of 194,950. Had a three-point proposal 1. Tibet considered a part of China. 2. That China be responsible for the defense of Tibet. And 3. Responsible for Tibet's trade and foreign relations. Simultaneously. The People's Liberation Army steadily deployed forces on Tibet's eastern border. The aim was to force Tibet's hand in negotiations. Tibet had a small, ill-equipped army that was no match for the PLOS might. Its borders were porous and the population was relatively small and dispersed. In the event of an invasion, Tibet stood no chance without outside support. And none seemed likely to reach it. The PLA crossed the Jinsha River and entered Kham province in the early hours of October 7, 1950. By October 19, he captured the town of Chamdo and neutralized the Tibetan garrison there. More than 3,000 Tibetans were captured and at least 180 in the fighting. China soon ceased hostilities. The real issue was understood. The defeated Chamdo governor sent Nabo Nawang Jigma Lhasa to reiterate his offer the Dalai Lama, who was only 15 years old at the time. Tibet was forced to be conquered by the Chinese in May 1951. Under